All praises to the Most High. All praises, brothers and sisters. Um, another glorious day. All right. So tonight's topic is called dealing with stubborn sins. Dealing with stubborn sins. Okay, that's tonight's topic. Okay, we're going to deal with how to identify those stubborn sins and how to get rid of them. Okay, and why they keep coming back. So we're going to be dealing with that stuff this day. All right, uh, let's open up with the book of Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew 26, 41. Let's read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Come on. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But the what? But the flesh is weak. But the flesh is weak. He says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. What Christ is teaching us here says, watch as well as pray. So a lot of the times, because when you come into this truth, there's certain things you can just do them, you know, without any effort, without you having to struggle with it. But there's some sins that are really difficult to get rid of. Okay, so that's what we're going to deal with today. Because some, you know, when you come in, you learn, okay, I must wear a dress as a sister, put on fringes, cover your head. You understand things of that nature. Uh, brothers, grow your beard, put fringes on. Don't break the Sabbath. You understand things of that nature. Okay, don't eat pork. Okay, don't eat crab, shrimp and lobster and so forth. Things of that nature. So those you can go call take, you can just get them done. But there are some sins that is not easy to get rid of them. They keep coming back. It disappears and then all of a sudden it hits you out of nowhere. You understand? So we're going to deal with that. Read that again, verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Read. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is meek. You see that thing? The problem is that the spirit is willing, meaning your mind wants to do it, but your flesh is weak. Okay? This, these frail bodies we got, they are weak. So they are lasting after many things. That's why, um, that's why it's easy to fall back into that old vomit. Okay? Because of the flesh that is weak. Watch this. Give me Mark 13 verse 33. Mark chapter 13 verse 33. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Read. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. You see that thing? You don't know when the time the Lord is going to return. You don't know. But he is coming. So he says, take heed, watch and pray. Be mindful. Stay in the spirit. Watch as well as pray. Okay? For you know not when the time is. I mean, in the time of the Lord. You don't know. Okay, watch this. Go back to Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Read. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Go ahead. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we're going to deal with this weak flesh. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we need to deal with this weak flesh. How to train our minds and discipline our minds with the laws of God to be able to do what? To overcome the lusts of the flesh. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Read that. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Come on. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and make not provision for the flesh. Come to on. Fulfill the lusts thereof. You see that part right there? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Because your flesh is always lusting for stuff. You understand? Whether it be for sex, porn, uh, cigarette, nyaupe, weed, stealing, lying. You understand? All of that. It's always lusting for stuff. So read that part again. Verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Read. But be ye on the but put no, you no. on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh. Read. To fulfill the lust thereof. He says, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He says, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put the whole Bible. Read the whole Bible. Apply the whole Bible to your life. And make not provision for the flesh. That's the part you want to deal with. Don't make provision for the flesh. Meaning what? 
do not allow that pesky sin. You understand? You know you are dealing with uh, the spirit of lying, the spirit of uh, deceit and all of that. And guess what? You make provision for it. You create a hot pocket for it. Okay? And whenever you things don't go well, you always go back to that thing. So that's how you make provision for it. You create a safety net of the sin that you don't want to get rid of. Or you get rid of it, but you always make sure that there's a way for you to always to get to it. So that's why you make provision for the flesh. And why we make provision for the flesh? Read the next part of the verse. To fulfill the lusts thereof. You see that thing? The reason why we make provision for the flesh, that weak flesh, is to so that we can fulfill our lusts. That's why. Okay? That's why we do that. So that you can fulfill the lust of the flesh. Give me that in First John 2, verse 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Watch this. You know what? John, Let's get to the point. Read verse 16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The what? The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. You see that thing? Because when you make provision for that weak flesh, guess what you're going to do? You're going to fulfill the lust that your flesh is lusting after. Go ahead. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. The lust of the pride. eyes. The lust of the eyes because what you see with your eyes, you can lust because what you see with your eyes, guess what? You see it, you want it for yourself. Go ahead. And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that thing? Because the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they all go hand in hand. You understand? Because when you lust after things, your flesh is, your flesh is lusting after porn. Your flesh is lusting after um, money. Your flesh is lusting after that, that, um, that Lamborghini. Okay? Your, fle it's your flesh is lusting after that thing. You understand? Um, the lust of your eyes and the pride of life because now you'll be, it's gonna, your flesh is going to cause you to move in the spirit of pride. And when, when you move in the spirit of pride, give me that in Sarah 10, verse 12. Sarah chapter 10, verse 12. Your flesh is going to make you do things for you to forsake the most high God. Okay? Sarah 10, verse 12. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God. Come on. And his, and his heart is turned away from his maker. You see that thing? So when you, your flesh is going to cause you to depart from the most high God. That's what your flesh will do. Because it's lasting after things that go against what's written in the Bible. You see that thing? It's going to cause you to sin if you entertain that lust. Okay, go back. Go back to Romans chapter 13, verse 14 again. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Read. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and provision for the flesh. Come to on. To fulfill the lust thereof. To fulfill the lust thereof. Watch this. It's so it says, don't make provision for the flesh so that you can, your flesh will cause what? Your soul to sin. Watch this. Romans 6, verse 12 now. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. You're weak for our, our flesh is weak. So the laws of God is designed for us to combat that, to fight this fleshly body that we, the bodies we've got, because they are lasting for everything. Whether you see is because of what you see or is because what you feel, your flesh is always lasting for stuff. And the, the, the time is, is basically, it's a momentary thing. You understand? It doesn't last long. That's the point. Your flesh will cause you the kingdom because a temporary, a temporary feeling will cause you the kingdom in the long run. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Watch this. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Come on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mercy, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. You see that thing? It says, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. So don't let the breaking of God's laws rule over you. It says that you should obey. You obey what? You obey that sin in the day of your lust. He says, don't allow that thing to go down. So the laws of God is what's going to help you to put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll always be fighting the weak flesh because 
Now you know that the flesh is weak because a lot of the times um, we don't even think about it consciously that this flesh is weak. So you need to be able to understand this flesh is weak. I'm going to train my mind so that my flesh is able to what to overcome. I mean, my mind, you're going to train your mind with the laws of God to overcome the lust of your flesh. That's the key. Okay, read the part again, verse 12. Romans 56, verse 12. Read. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. Meaning your body, your flesh is going to obey that sin because your body or your flesh is always lusting for every little thing. You understand? So you're going to make a temporary decision you understand? You're gonna make a you're gonna make a temporary decision, and it's gonna cost you the kingdom. So our job is to do what is to be aware of the flesh that we have, which is weak. And once we are aware of it, we get we begin to work on it. We begin to be aware of it at all times that this thing is lasting for everything. So your job is to be aware of it and what and constantly be watching over that flesh with the laws of God. That's your job. It's a day to day thing. 24 hours a day, that's the job for every man and woman in here. Watch this. Give me. And one of the things that cause brothers and sisters to fall into that sin, you see that sin that keeps coming back over and over, is because one of the biggest contributors of that is because, because when you are among the brothers and sisters, you don't have time. The mind does not have time to be wandering off. You understand? When you are alone, that's when Satan comes to pay you a visit. You understand when you are alone. So a lot of the BC me, me, I make sure I always talk to brothers. I make sure I always I will communicate. Why? Because I don't want to be by myself like that. Because I know how dangerous the mind is. So I always keep in contact until at some point where I have to sleep now. Because listen, the mind is very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous, very wicked. So you always have to know, you must know yourself. Watch this. Give me Sarah 33, verse 27. Okay. This is how you deal with the with, with, um, with one of the reasons why brothers and sisters fall back into the same sin they are trying to get rid of. It keeps coming back over and over. The, one of the biggest contributors is idleness. Okay. Sarah 33, verse 27. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 27. Come on. Send him to labor, mm -hmm. that he be not idle. Come on. For idleness teacheth much evil. You see that thing? For idleness teacheth much evil. The internet. You understand? The Facebook. The Instagram. The Twitter. The YouTubes. The TikToks. Listen, the list goes on and on and on. Because now evil is sitting in your phone 24 hours a day. Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay? So, you know, I was talking to Soldier Jonah. And I was looking at the because we have a Facebook page, and I'm clicking on it, and there's a tab when it says uh, suggestion, you know, friends, friend suggestion. And when I look, when I click that tab, listen, 80% there is just women. I'm like, what the hell is this? And every day I be clicking, remove, 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 remove. The next day I find the same stuff. You see that thing? And I try to see how I can hack this thing to get rid of the stuff. No, it doesn't. You understand? Every day they'll be suggesting new people that you don't even know. And majority of the time, the women over there, they are naked. They are half. Listen. You see what I'm saying? So I, listen, me, I ended up removing the stuff on my phone. Now I don't have Facebook on my phone. The hell is this? Okay. You brothers deal with the social media, deal with the Facebooks. Yeah. Okay. Read that part again, verse 27. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 27. Right. Send him to labor, that mm -hmm. he be not idle. Come on. For idleness teacheth much evil. For idleness teacheth much evil. Idleness will teach evil. Okay? Because now you're going to be sitting down and saying, hmm. So you make sure that always be doing the work. Keep busy. Okay? No matter what's going on, do the work of the most like God. Even if he's creating a, a banner. Create a banner. Okay? If he's posting what... Listen... Keep yourself busy. Make sure that you are not idle because once you are idle, Satan will pay you a visit. And guess what? You'll be reminded back of how, what you used to do in the world. Satan is like that. 
if your mind is not stayed on the Lord at all times. Watch this. Sirach 37 verse 27. Ecclesiasticus 37 verse 27. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes 37 verse 27. Come on. Son, prove thy soul in thy life mm -hmm. and see what is evil for it. Come on. If not, that unto it. That's how you put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the last the all. So Sirach is saying, prove thy soul in thy life because the subject matter is your soul. Prove your soul. Meaning what? Investigate what is evil for your soul. That's what it says, and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. You know this thing is evil for me. It's not good for me. Guess what you must do? Don't give yourself to that thing because when you keep giving yourself to it, it will eventually... It will get it eventually you're gonna get touched. Okay. So that's why it says prove your soul in your life. Know that everybody, like you know, they you know, you know, there's some there's just that one thing that you are dealing with, it doesn't want to go away. Okay. If you've been in the truth for a while, maybe uh, six months or to a year, or so, so you'll you'll start to understand this thing. I'm I'm struggling with this thing, it just keeps coming back. Okay, so that's what we're going to deal with this day. Watch this. And the reason why the Most High God is allowing this thing to keep coming back, he, he wants to what? We need to, be, we need to show ourselves worthy to this cause. We need to show ourselves worthy to the calling on, into this truth. Because you mean to tell me that the Lord cannot just make all those sins go away? Of course he can do it. But you must prove yourself worthy for you being called into this thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians 4 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Read. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, mm -hmm. beseech, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. You see what he's saying? He says you must walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So there's going to be some sins that are going to be get difficult to get rid of. Why? Because the Lord needs to purge something out of you. So it keeps coming back to what? To prove you. To prove yourself that you are worthy for this calling that the Lord has called you into this thing. That's what it says, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. The vocation is a what? Is the duty. The duty with which you are called, you must show yourself worthy. That you what? That you, 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 you understand why the Lord called you and you're going to do that which is written to prove to the most high God that he did not make a mistake to bring you up in here. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7. Okay, because the apostle Paul, he was mighty in the scriptures. He was hot in the spirit. But there was just one thing that was really like, he, but the Lord doesn't explain it. They don't, um, it's, it's not actually written here explicitly. Okay, watch this. Um, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7. Read that. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through Maybe. the abundance of the revelations. Mm -hmm. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. A what? The messenger. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. That sin that doesn't want to go away. Go ahead. The messenger of Satan to buffet, to buffet me. To do lest what? I to buffet me. To buffet means to do what? Means to whip. Means to try. To try you. You understand? To see if you are worthy for this calling. To buffet me. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. To try you. To see if you are worthy. To be put in a furnace. Go ahead. Lest I should be exalted above measure. You see that thing? Lest I should be exalted above measure. Because guess what? So that you don't become high-minded. So that you don't lose the, you don't lose the point. You, you understand? So that you don't lose focus. So, because the Apostle Paul, he did anything and everything, but there was one thing that was troubling him. And guess what he did? Next verse, verse 8. Come on. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it, that it might depart from me. So he begged the most, he, he begged Christ three times to get rid of this thing. He said, no. Next verse, watch this. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, mm -hmm. for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You see what he's saying? This is what Christ said. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee, 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So he's saying, listen, you must keep fighting. Endure. Keep fighting it until the end. Because it will keep coming back over and over to prove your worthiness in this truth. You understand? To keep your spirit in check. To keep you focused. That's why this thing keeps coming back. So that you can what? The Lord can pay certain things out of you. Okay? Read that again. Finish it. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see that thing? Because in that weakness, guess what you're going to do? You working on it diligently, consistently, daily. You understand? Disciplining yourself to work on that problem set that keeps coming back. That's how you make yourself worthy. That's why the grace of Christ is sufficient because the Lord is going to give you time to work on it. If, go back to Romans 13 verse 14. If you do this right here, okay? Romans chapter 13 verse 14. Read. Really? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh to mm -hmm. fulfill the lust thereof. That's how, that, you see that thing? You must put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So what is the grace? The grace is the time period we've been given to get ourselves right. So he says, the time I've given you to fix this thing is sufficient. So work on it. Enjoy. Work on, work on it until what? And even until you die, wake you in this truth or until I return. Is to keep you, is to keep you in check. Basically, the trial that keeps coming back, that's the most I goes mercy upon you. Understand that thing. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Um, and you know, another thing also is that we need to ask ourselves, okay, so one of the, the we said one of the reasons why the sins, the, the, some of these sins that don't want to go away, they keep coming back is because idleness. Idleness teaches much evil. Another thing why they keep coming back is what? You become complacent. When you first came in, you was hot in the spirit. You know, oh man, I want to do this so and so. And then over time, it started to become monotonous. You understand? So now you lose the fire. You, you lose that fire. The fire that you had once you, when you first came in, now it's starting to die out. So your job is to do what? Give me that in Romans. Watch, watch this. No, Revelation chapter 2. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Come on. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, mm -hmm. and repent and do the first works. Come on. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will prove that and will remove thy candlestick out of this place except a repent. You see what Christ is saying? It says when you lose that fire, you must retrace your steps and see where you fell. Where did it all go wrong? What did you do that caused you to end up in the place that you are right now? So the Lord is saying, you say what? Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Meaning, get it together. Fix it. He's giving you time to get it right. And do the first works. What was the first works? Keeping the commandments and raising your nation up. You understand? That's supposed to what? And looking forward to the kingdom that's coming. So, that's what Christ is really saying. He's giving, he's, he's what? He's encouraging us. Remember, therefore, where you fell. And repent. And do the first works. Or else, I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Meaning what? Before I kill you. Get it together. That's what he's saying right there. So our job is to do what? Is to keep rekindling that fire. Is to keep that fire burning. You understand? And a lot of the times that fire doesn't, it doesn't stay uh, kindled like that is because we become complacent. You understand? We start to take things for granted. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Romans 12 verse 11. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Not slothful in business. Ray. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You see that thing? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit. You must be hot in the spirit, serving the Lord. The only way you're going to continue to make sure that that fire remains kindled, you must be serving the most of God. Do the work. You understand? Whatever business that the Lord has for you doing, whatever skill you have, use that skill for the benefit of the nation of Israel. Stay busy. You understand? Don't have idle hands. That's how you make sure that you stay in the spirit. 
whatever, whatever you can do, do it for the glory of the Most High God. But make sure that you stay in the spirit, remain in this truth. Don't give up. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse, eight, verse 18. Come on. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. You see that thing? By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. What building is this? The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. We the temple. You understand? All 12 tribes, we are the temple because the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. So now guess what? We are the temple. So says that by much slothfulness, the building decayeth. So when you are slothful, when you are lazy, you make excuses, you become complacent. Guess what happens? You understand? The building will decay. Your mind is going to decay. The spirit will leave. Okay? Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 18. Great. By much slothfulness, the building decays. Mm -hmm. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. You see that thing? Through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. That's why it says, prove thy soul in thy life. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Don't be idle because idleness teacheth much evil. That the evil that you're going to do, guess what? It's going to cause the house, it's going to cause the house to drop through to be destroyed, to be a hindrance to this truth. So we can't move in that spirit. Watch this. Proverbs 19, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 15. Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 15. Read. Slothfulness casteth into deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. You see that thing? And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger, meaning poverty. Because here we are, we're working in the Most High's vineyard to get the kingdom. So if we don't work, we're not going to eat. We're not going to get the kingdom. So guess what? You must stay busy. Keep busy. Do the work. You understand? See where you can assist in the body so that the work can continue. And by so doing, you are making sure that you are not making provision for your flesh. Because you know your flesh is weak to fulfill the lust of your flesh. So in order to make sure that that doesn't happen, stay busy. Don't be slothful. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Because the reason why they keep coming back is because, you know what, before you get to me that, give me Sarah 2 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Each and every one of us in here, the most High God has called us. Both men and women. Okay, watch this. Sarah 2 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Read. My son. If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see that thing, my son, if you come to serve the Lord, because all of you here, the Lord has called you. The Most High God has handpicked each and every one of you to be in here. Your job now that you're in the vineyard, you understand what your job is, let's get it done. That's why if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. How do you prepare? You sit down, you study, you apply, you seek counsel. You seek counsel before every action. You understand? So that's what he's saying right there. Because if you don't seek that counsel, you're not preparing yourself for temptation. There's things that you're not going to see. Because some of you brothers, you're moving in that spirit. Because you think you're somewhere when you're not. Okay? I need you brothers to stay in the spirit. Read that again, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And here's the thing that we need to understand about the temptations, okay? He says you must prepare for temptations. But this is the thing we need to understand when it comes to the temptations that will come upon us. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 4 verse 13. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Watch this. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Come on. And when the devil had ended all the, the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For how long? For a season. For a season. So the temptations are seasonal. So you might be, you might be dealing with something right now. It's not going to last forever. And then guess what? After that, the devil will leave, for, but he's only going to leave you for a season. Another season is going to return, but you don't know when he's going to return. So a lot of the times when brothers, they're going through a trial, 
they overcome the trial, they become complacent. He said, you know what? No, I, I, I overcame that thing. Now you relax. When you relax, that's when the devil will pay you a visit. And when he comes, you're not going to see him coming. Because why? What you don't know. You don't understand that the, the, the temptations are seasonal. They are seasonal. Read that part again, verse 13. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 13. Come on. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. You see that thing? He departed from him for a season. Only for a season. So when he departs for a season, guess what you are doing? You're preparing for the next fight. That's how you must look at it. When you overcome this trial, you prepare for the next fight. Because you know, the next fight is coming. There's no e for maybe about it. The next fight is coming. So you prepare for that fight. Watch this. Give me Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Luke 9, verse 62. Because when, when, when he departs for a season, a lot of brothers and sisters, this is what they do. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Read. Really? And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You see that thing? If you start, the, you start now. You come into this truth, you do the work, and then you become complacent because you overcame a trial, you decided, you know what, let me relax myself. No, it's not time to relax. Your job is to prepare for the next fight, to prepare for the next trial because you know it's coming. So you can't look back because when you look back, you're not going to be fit enough to overcome the trial that will come upon you, which is guaranteed it will come. You see that thing, Sirach 18, verse 7 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 7. When a man hath done. No, when a man he, has done the work. You, you, start, you, you do the work. Okay, come on. Then he beginneth. Then you beginneth to do what? Next part of the verse. And when he leaveth off. Then you start. Then, to become what you start to become complacent hold on you start to become complacent you you do, you do the work then guess what then you begin to do what to start to become complacent you relax because you just overcame a trial or you come into the truth that you run you're not going through any major trials it's just small things here and there but because you don't understand that that is to prepare you for the big trial that's coming guess what you do you start to become complacent you leave it off Read on. And when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. Mm -hmm. He says, then he shall be he shall be doubtful. The doubt that comes in is you you are in the you are, you come in no trials you are not going through any trials okay. Then you start things are just you know things is things are moving in a straight line for you everything is smooth. You understand you are moving nicely on the freeway, and guess what starts to happen. Because you start to see brothers and sisters around you that are going through trials and you are not going through anything. And at the same time, you're not preparing for the child that's coming. The doubt comes in and say, ah, but you know what? Ah, you know, it's, it's, not, it's really not that, it's not that bad. You know, I, I don't think I should sit down and be pushing so hard eh, because, you know, they are not like me or I'm not like, like them. Whatever the, you, whatever you're going to convince yourself. Because that's the doubt. Because your mind now is what? Is tap dancing left and right. You're not focused. Because when you see that there's no trials, your job is to what? Your mind automatically is supposed to tell you, according to the scriptures, prepare. It's preparation time. So that's what, it's called grace. The Lord is giving a chance to prepare, to learn, so you know how to prepare yourself for the child that's coming. So when it keeps coming back, it's because you become complacent, you relax. And then the next season when the, the, the trial of temptation comes, guess what? You're not ready for it. And Satan knocks you out. The, the, uh, he knocks you out in the first round. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 35. 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 35. Because what you will understand, what you need to understand, brothers and sisters, is that um, everyone goes through stuff. We are all dealing with things, each and every one of us, okay? There's no man that is not going through something. We are all dealing with stuff, including myself. Everyone is there's something that they are dealing with. And every day is a fight 
Okay. Second Ezra 8 verse 35. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 35. For in Wait. truth, there is no man among them that be born, mm -hmm. but he hath dealt wickedly. And among the faithful, there is none which has not done amiss. You see that thing? So he's saying, even the faithful ones, they, there's something that they went off about. You understand? Our forefathers in the past. They all did things that were not according to the scriptures. You understand? That's why he is saying, um, among the faithful, there is none which hath not done amiss. Meaning what? Everybody, they have a sin that they are dealing with. They have a thorn in their flesh. Each and every one of us. You understand? And sometimes you will fall short. Your job is to get up and dust yourself off the mission as a goal. Keep fighting until you overcome it. That's why Christ says, I'm giving you grace. Fix it. That's the point. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Get up and fix it. Watch this. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Read that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Come on. If they sin against thee, mm -hmm. for there is no man that sinneth not. You see that part right there? For there is no man that sinneth not. Because guess what? Everyone has a thorn in their flesh that they are dealing with. So that's what he's saying in 2 Ezra 8.35. You will have a thorn in your flesh. You understand? So that's why it's important to understand that the trials are seasonal. You understand? The trials are seasonal. Watch this. Drop that. Give me the book of Daniel 9 verse 11. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Read. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. No, some of them. All Israel have transgressed thy law. You see that thing? Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Come on. Even by departing, mm -hmm. that they might not obey thy voice. Really? Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servants of God, because we have sinned against him. Because we have sinned against him. So guess what? When you tell yourself that you are not, you are, you are not, there's no sin that you, are, you, you have that you must deal with, you're just deceiving yourself. And when you deceive yourself, because guess what? I agree you are complacent. There's no trial going on in your life. There's no major stuff that are happening to you and all of that. You become complacent. You become puffed up. Okay, watch this. First John chapter 1 verse 8. First John chapter 1 and verse 8. First John chapter 1, verse 8. Read. If we say that we have no sin, mm -hmm. we deceive ourselves. Come on. And the truth is not in us. The laws of God to keep us in check is not in our spirits. You understand? Read that again. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So now the question is, what happens when you deceive yourself? I get it, there's no trial that is really going on with the, there's no trials that are happening to you yet. You understand? Or a trial came and you overcame it. Now, instead of preparing for the next fight, you become complacent, not remembering that the trials are seasonal. You understand? So guess what? You start to, you, when you deceive yourself, this is what happens. Give me Matthew 12, verse 43. When we deceive ourselves with saying we are not, we are not dealing with anything, there's no nothing that I have to sit down to examine. That's, de that's deceit. Deceiving yourself. Lying to yourself. Watch this. Give me Matthew 12, verse 43. Read that. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... You when he when the what? When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... So now, guess what? When you overcome that trial, that unclean spirit, it leaves you. The unclean spirit will leave you, will depart from you. Okay, watch this, come on. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth mm -hmm. none. You see that thing? Because now it's no longer in your spirit now. It has departed from you for a season. Because it's seasonal. It will come back. Watch this. Hold this. Give me Luke 4 verse 13 again. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Come on. 
And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him from him for a season. You see that thing? So that unclean spirit or that demon will leave you. The demon will leave you, but is only going to leave you for a season. You understand? Go back to Luke. I mean, Matthew 12, verse 43 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Read. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. You see that thing? That unclean, that, that, the unclean spirit will leave you, okay? Will depart from you, but only for a season to seek rest somewhere else. So that demon just keeps jumping from one person to the next, but it always returns back to the original, to the, to the, to the, to the origin, to the source. You understand? Watch this. Because you work hard to get rid of this demon. And then it departs. Satan will depart, will depart from you, but only for a season. Next verse. Then he saith, I will return unto the house from whence I came out. Mm -hmm. And when he is come, he findeth it swept and garnished. You see that thing? So now... This, the unclean spirit, when it leaves, it says, you know what? I'm going to come back to that place. It says, and when he returns, in, and it says, I will return into my house. Okay, that's why you see some, some people, they are struggling with, um, with cigarette. So what happens is they, they stop. They say, no, I, I'm, I'm, I want to quit smoking. Okay, they quit smoking. Maybe they do it for, I don't know, maybe a month. So what happens is that that spirit leaves for that 30 days. They've just been consistently just resisting to smoke. But because they are around people that smoke, they are not minding their company. They are not making a change in their life to avoid that lifestyle that will attract them back to that field. Guess what happens? That unclean spirit will come back. That's why there is the, and the, the manner in which it comes back. You know how it comes back? The people that you used to smoke with, all of a sudden, they're just they offering you smoke. No, no, I'm not smoking anymore. Okay, they will be offering you smoke. Guess what? Before you know it, you say, you know what? Yeah, maybe just one path. Got you. The spirit will say, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse forty-five. Verse forty-five. Then go with me and take it with himself. Seven other spirits more wicked himself. So Matthew 12, verse 45 says, Then he goeth, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now, what is this? What is this really explained? This, what is this saying? This is saying that that unclean spirit will leave, right? It it leaves for you for a moment, for a season. Then it comes back. And then it realizes that you know what? I missed this place. Okay, but when it returns, it doesn't return by itself. Let's say porn is your problem. Okay, I'm going to deal with that because that's common. I'm on black men and black women too. Don't leave the women out of this. So what happens is at the beginning, at the first trial, you was dealing with that. You was just dealing with regular porn. Then when that spirit returns, Guess what? It brings seven other most seven other spirits more wicked than itself. But it's not something outside of that thing that you were dealing with in the first place. No, no. It's still within the same context. Now you're gonna start liking what? You're gonna start liking uh rough sex. You're gonna start liking uh choking, whatever they call it. You understand? You're gonna start like there are all sorts of things. Before you know it, child pornography. Before you know it, gay. Before you know it sleeping with cougars before you know it bestiality you see that thing it escalates you understand you start you now you into lesbianism now you are into gay now you are into gang bangs now listen now all of that spirit has plagued you now it brings more wicked spirit than himself but it's not anything outside it's not going to bring a smoking one no it's bringing the same one in the same context that's what that means. Now, what happens when, when that happens? Guess what? Read verse 45 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. Read. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Come on. And they enter in and dwell there. 
and, and do the what? Lost and dwell there. They dwell there. I mean, now they are on you now, those spirits. You see that now you've got eight spirits now. Watch this. And the lost state of that man is worse than the first. You see that thing? That's the impact of it. The last stage of you will be worse than the way the, will be worse than when you first started. Now it's gonna be harder for you to come out of that pit. It's gonna be harder for you to get rid of that thing because now it's bringing seven more seven seven other spirits that are more wicked than itself. You see that thing? So now you have to work extra hard now to get rid of it because when you were dealing with the trial and you overcame it, you decided to become complacent. And that's why when it returns now, guess what? You are relaxed. You didn't prepare yourself for the next fight. So guess what? He brings a gang now with him when he comes. All those spirits are going to jump on you. Now, you guess what? You're going to be played. It's going to be, it's, it's then, now, now it starts to become harder and harder for you in this truth. Why? Because you, de you, are, you, are, you, you decided to drop the ball to become complacent. Okay, so it's very important to always stay in the spirit. Stay and make sure that you are always you are always fighting. I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes. You will make mistakes. Okay, you better believe that thing. But it's not the end of the world. Okay, as long as you are still vertical, you better fight. You better fight. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 24. And one of the biggest things that allow you to really fall into that trap the sin just keeps coming back over and over. You are dealing with a lying spirit. But for some reason, this thing just keeps coming back. For some reason, I keep falling back into that smoking demon. I keep falling back into that deceitful demon again. You understand? So on and so forth. Why? Because you when, when you were supposed to prepare for the next fight, you decided to become complacent. You dropped the ball. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me Sirach 17 verse 24, because one of the reasons why this, um, you, you, you are overcome by that thing, this is why. Sirach 17 verse 24, read that. Ecclesiastes 17 verse 24. Read. But unto them that repent, mm -hmm. he granted them return. He does what? He granted them return. So unto them that repent, meaning what? You live off from your sins now. He says he will grant you return. Watch this, come on. And comforted those that failed in patience. You see that? He says he's going to comfort you when those that failed in patience. What does that mean? The reason why you find yourself being overcome, you understand, is because you failed in patience. You failed in patience. One of the things that we do is that we lose patience. You are going through a trial, okay? You go through a trial. And what happens is some, well, while you are going through that trial, you, you become impatient because it's taking too long. There's a reason why the trial is taking too long because the Lord is showing you there's a much bigger problem going on here. So it's going to take longer for you to overcome this thing. There's things I need to purge out of your spirit regarding this thing. So a lot of us, we tend to do what? we tend to become impatient because it's not happening quicker than we anticipated. Or you go through the trial, right? You overcome it. And then you relax. And then another trial comes. Guess what happens? Now you have to be tried. Now, you, now it starts to become, you start to, it starts to become grievous to you because you're like, when are these, are these trials never going to end? No, these trials are not going to end. They're just going to keep coming. The Lord doesn't want you to relax. The Lord doesn't want you to be complacent because when you become complacent, you become idle and idleness teacheth much evil. So the Lord is doing that to what? To make sure that he can protect you, can deliver you out of temptation. That's the point. That's why he does it. Okay, read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 17 verse 24. But unto them that repent, he granted them return mm -hmm. and comforted those that failed in patience. And comforted those that failed in patience. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21. Okay. Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Come on. In your patience, 
possess ye your souls. You see what he's saying? He says, in your patience, make sure that your soul is intact. How do you do that? Go back to Sirach 37 verse 27. Ecclesiastes 37 verse 27. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life mm -hmm. and see what is evil for it. Read. And give not that unto it. You see that thing? You're constantly proving your soul. How do you do that? You examine yourself. That's how you prove your soul because you understand there's a child that's coming. I need to prove my soul. I need to prepare my soul for it. I need to what? To always be watchful. I need to go through the stuff that I know that I struggle with or I don't see them coming. I always fail. I, don't, I never see it coming. That's the point. So we need to examine ourselves, be constantly working on ourselves. There's no time where you can say, you know what? Yeah, today I don't really want to deal with the Bible. No, that's not the spirit we have. You can't move in that spirit. You understand? And that spirit will get you killed. Okay, read that again. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 27. Verse 27. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and mm -hmm. see what is evil for it and Read. give not that unto it. And don't give your soul unto the things that you know they are evil for it. You know that um, um, you know that women with big booty women, they are evil for your soul. Guess what? Stay away. Okay? Stay away. You know that uh, you are dealing with lust, but you go to the beach. Why would you go there for? You know that you, are, you are, have a lust demon that you are struggling with is a, is a thorn in your flesh, but you go to the beach. What are you going to the beach for? You know almost when you get there, it's going to be half-naked women and naked women. Why would you go there? That's the point. Okay? So you must know what is evil for your soul. And don't give, that, don't give to your soul that which you know is evil for it. You know you, you struggle with alcohol. Instead of changing roots, you understand, or disassociating with people that you used to drink with, guess what? You are among them and say, nah, I'm going to sit with them, but I'm not going to drink. Listen, you are going to drink. Because that demon now, you're going, you're going where the demon is. Now it's multiple demons now. Because there's multiple people that is drinking when you're not drinking, but you are there. What are you doing there for? That means all the spirits that are in those people that are there, the unclean spirits, they are all going to jump on you. That's the point. So guess what you do? You stay away. Okay, give me that in Psalms 119 verse 63. Psalms chapter 119, verse 63. Read. I am a companion of all them that fear thee mm -hmm. and of them that keep thy precepts. You see that thing? You must associate with those that keep the precepts of the Most High, those that keep the commandments, like-minded. You understand? You must move with those that are, that are also, they're, they're all, they're, they're also, they are moving in the same spirit as you. Okay, they are moving in the same spirit of you. So your job is to do what? Uh, uh, surround yourself with the brethren. You understand? Don't find yourself being idle. You know, you, you, we, we, oh, we coming from the evils of the world. Now in this truth, we need to walk according to the scriptures. And that's not easy because this is not going to be handed easy to us. No, it's not going to be like that. We're going to work hard for it. We're going to have to work hard for this thing. Like you read Genesis 3. Okay, watch this. Um, go back to where he was at, Sirach 17, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 24. Read. But unto them that repent, mm -hmm. he granted them return. Read. And comforted those that failed in patience. And comforted those that failed in patience. Because you was working hard, you was um, applying the commandments, you are pushing, you are fighting. And guess what? You failed in patience. That a child was able to knock you out. So guess what you must do? The Lord says he's going to comfort you because why? He says, as long as you are putting me on, when you, when you fail in patience, I will comfort you. That's what the Lord, but you must keep, you must put the Lord on. Keep putting him on. Make sure that you put, in, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Because you understand now that your flesh is, your flesh is weak. Your mind wants to keep the commandments, but your flesh wants to do something different, contrary to the laws of God. So Christ says, I'm going to comfort you 
when you fail in patience, only if you put me on. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 13. Go back there. Romans 13 now. Okay, verse 12. Read Romans 13, verse 12. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Read. The night is for spent. The mm-hmm. day is at hand. Come on. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness mm-hmm. and let us put on the armor of light. Let us what? And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light, verse 14 now. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that part right there? But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jump back up to the verse, verse 12. Let us what? And let us put on the armor of light. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So that armor of light is Jesus Christ. He says, put me on. Guess what he will do? Go back to Sirach 17, 24. Ecclesiastes 17, verse 24. Read. But unto them that repent, mm-hmm. he granted them return. Come on. And comforted those that failed in patience. And comforted those that failed in patience. So guess what? As long as you keep fighting, as long as you keep doing the work of the Most High God, applying the commandments to your life, because the key is to fight. You must endure. The key is patience and endurance. And what's, what, what is fueled by patience and endurance is what? The love of the Most High, the love you have for the Lord, and the fear you have for the Most High God. Those are the things that are going to keep you motivated, and the work that you must do to deliver your people out of oppression. When you when you are focused on that, guess what? When you fail in patience, the Lord will comfort you. The Most High will have mercy upon you. So that's why we always must pray for mercy all the time. Pray for mercy of the Most High. You understand? Because guess what? When we fail in patience. We would like the Most High God to do what? To have mercy on us on that day instead of judging us. But the Lord will have mercy upon us to give us a chance to get it correct. Okay? That's the point right there. Watch this. Give me... um, Before we get that, actually, give me the book of James, chapter 1, verse 4. James 1. Okay? The Lord says it will comfort you, comfort those that failed in patience. Because the purpose of this patience that you must develop is what? Watch this. James chapter 1 verse 4. James chapter 1 verse 4. Read. But let patience have her perfect work. Have a what? That ye may be perfect and entire. It says, but let patience have a perfect work. So it's important for us to, that's why Christ in Luke 21 verse 19, he says, in your patience, possess your soul. Possess your soul. Make sure that you keep your soul intact. How do you do that? You stay in the spirit. Okay. But let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, meaning and hold, wanting nothing, meaning lacking nothing, not lacking understanding. You must have understanding. And patience is designed to what? To work the spirit of pain, to, to work the spirit of perfection in you. Because that's what the Lord wants. The only way we're going to reach that level of perfection is if you endure, if you understand that your flesh is weak, okay? And understanding that your mind wants to keep the commandment, your spirit is about the, the, the father's business, but your flesh is fighting it, okay? Once you understand that, you must what? You must welcome the trials because when the Lord sends you trials, is to do what? Because you might be having the spirit of anger, okay? And that, that the situations come up, where that's, you have to be tested, the Lord will prove you to see if are you truly examining yourself with this anger that you've got. And it will keep coming back if you don't deal with it. Even. So when you start to deal with it, guess what? The Lord, that's why he keeps bringing it back because he's seeing that that thing is still there. It's still laying dormant in you. Yes, you are working on it, but you're not really getting to the root, the root cause of the problem. So the Lord will keep bringing it up. The Lord will keep bringing it back and turning it up. You understand? So that you are always reminded that you are, by the way, you are not dealing with this the way that you should. You are not giving this thing more attention more attention as you must. You see that thing? Read that again. Verse 4. James chapter 1 verse 4. 
Read. But let patience have her perfect work, mm -hmm. that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see that patience must have a perfect work. So the reason why you get trials is so, is so that what? You can what? The Lord can teach you to get rid of the things that you are dealing with. That The thorn that you have in your flesh, the trial is designed to teach you the spirit of patience and have the patience to do what? To examine yourself, to endure, so you can get rid of that thing that is, is distracting. That's why the, the Lord keeps sending us trials. Trial is, it, trial is mercy from the Mosa. That's what a trial is. A trial is a blessing in disguise. Okay, it's messy from the most high. Watch this. So now we need to understand steps to overcome this thing. How do we deal with that sin that keeps coming back over and over? Now we're going to deal with steps to overcome. We dealt with the problems, why it keeps coming back because of complacency, idleness, relaxation. You understand? You're not watching and praying as you should. You understand? So now it's time to understand the steps to overcome and stay in the spirit and maintain that course. Watch this. Give me the book of James 4 verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Read what you got. James chapter 4, verse 7. Mark. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil and Read. he will flee from you. Read that again, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Read. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he mm -hmm. will flee from you. So now the commandment is submit yourself to the most high. How do you do that? Go back to Romans 13 verse 14. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. Read. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and make not provision for the flesh to Come fulfill on. the last thereof. So now how do you submit yourself to the most high God? You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's that armor of light. Christ is that armor of light that you must put on. That's how you what? That's how you submit yourself to the Lord. You put on Christ. You keep the commandments. Okay? Go back to James 4 verse 7 again. James chapter 4 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil. And Do he what? will... Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Meaning fight. 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 That's what he's saying. Read it again. James chapter 4 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Come on. Resist the devil. Read. And he will flee from you. So the more you keep fighting, the more you keep enduring, the devil will, ev will eventually flee from you. But he only flees for how long? For a season. So your job when he flees is to prepare yourself for the next round. That's the job. So don't lose, don't, don't, don't lose focus. Stay in, that's why I say stay in the spirit. Why? Because you are preparing for the next fight. When you're going through a trial right now, that's fine. That's the trial. But when the, when the devil, when you fight to resist the devil, to resist the temptation, guess what happens next? He flees from you, but only for a season. He's going to return. Once you are aware of that, guess what you're doing? You're preparing yourself for the next fight. That's the way you have to think. All of us must think like that. Okay? Watch this. Give me um, Sirach 17 verse 25 now. Remember, he said, submit yourself, therefore, to God. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Sirach 17, verse 25. Come on. Ecclesiastes 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sin. Mm -hmm. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. And do what? And offend less. And offend less. So when you return unto the Lord... How do you return? Because when you return to the most High God, it says, and forsake thy sins. So the only time when the Lord will receive you, when you submit yourself unto him, you must forsake your sins. You must repent. For the Lord to, because to, when he says submit yourself to the Lord, how do you do that? You repent. You forsake your sins and make your prayer, meaning you confess the laws that you broke. You understand? So you can offend less and less of his laws then when you fail in patience the lord will may have mercy on you on that day that's the key that's why we always beg him for the most high's mercy okay because the lord knows that our flesh is weak and he knows the conditions that we're in it's not like he doesn't see he's a parent 
He understand what's, what's going on. But what he wants us to do is to apply and to follow exactly as it is written. And guess what? The Lord will be there with us. That's how we must think. That's how we must move when in this truth. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Titus now. Give me Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Titus 2 verse 7. Steps to overcome. Okay, write this down. Steps to overcome. Titus 2 verse 7. Watch this. Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. In all things, showing thyself a person of good works. Mm -hmm. In doctrine, showing the uncorruptness. Um, yes, sir. Titus chapter 2 and verse 7 again. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. A what? A pattern of good works. A pattern of good works. So a, in order for a pattern to emerge, what needs to happen? You need to, you, is, is there something that you have to do day by day? You cannot do something once and say, oh, that's a pattern of good works. No. It, that's why it's called a pattern. Meaning what? It's something that you have to do on a daily basis. Then you're developing a pattern. You see that thing? A routine. That's a routine. A pattern is a routine. So in order for there to be a pattern, for a pattern, it's like somebody painting. Somebody, they, they put a portrait and they come with them crayons. They, they draw it. They, 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 they just put a dot in the, on, in the center of the canvas. Okay, what are we doing? Is there a pattern there? No. But now when they start to sit down, when they start to spend some time on that canvas, guess what? Eventually you start to see, wait a minute, there's a pattern emerging here. Because the person, they are, they are constantly working on it. That's the same thing. That's what, that's the same thing that the Apostle Paul is teaching us here. Read that again. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Read. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. So you must show. That's what, that's the, you see the key word? Show. Meaning others must see that pattern. Yes, you must see it, but others also must see the pattern of good works. That's why it says, and show thyself a pattern of good works. Meaning others, you, the most High God will see it, and others will begin to see it. Also, you will see the pattern of those good works. You understand? Come on. In doctrine. In doctrine, which is the laws of God. Come on. Showing uncorruptness. Uh -huh. Gravity. Sincerity. So he says, in doctrine, in doctrine, give me that in um, Sirach chapter 19, verse 19. In doctrine, okay? In doctrine. In doctrine, you must show uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Watch this. Sirach 19, verse 19. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. The knowledge of God's commandments, guess what? Is that's the doctrine of life. Go ahead. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Meaning the kingdom of heaven on earth and living forever on earth. So the doctrine is the knowledge and the commandments of the most High God. So go back to Titus 2 verse 7. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Read. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Read. In Doctrine. In what? In doctrine. In doctrine. In the knowledge and the commandments of the Most High God. You must do what? Showing uncorruptness. You see that thing? You must show uncorruptness. Meaning you, you are not corruptible. You are not deceived. You understand? Because you have what? You have knowledge and the commandments of the Most High God. So that's how you're going to show uncorruptness. You're going to show gravity, meaning seriousness. In this Bible, you're going to show sincerity of application of God's laws, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors is going to be sincere. It's not going to be faked. You're not going to be faking the funk because guess what? It will show in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Okay, watch this. Titus 3 verse 8. I went over this yesterday. Titus 3 verse 8, read that. The book of Titus chapter 3 verse 8. This is a faithful saying. Is a what? This is a faithful saying. Is a faithful saying in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. 
And these things, I, will that thou art formed constantly. That he says, and these things I will that thou might affirm constantly. Meaning what? This is a thing that you do on a daily. It's constant. You have the spirit of consistency. And that spirit of consistency, wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5, give me that. That spirit of consistency is what? Is fueled by this right here. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee mm -hmm. this. The Holy Spirit of what? The Holy for the Holy Spirit of discipline mm -hmm. will flee. So the Holy Spirit, as we know, as we know, according to Acts 7, 51, 53, John 14, verse 15, is what? The laws of God. So the laws of God will do what? Will is the, the, the laws of God is to teach you discipline. You understand? And in order for a pattern to emerge, you must have discipline. You must have the spirit of consistency and discipline. Meaning what? For that pattern is not going to emerge. That good habit will not be developed if you don't have the spirit of discipline and consistency. You're not gonna, it's not, the pattern will not emerge. We're not gonna see that pattern of good works, of uncorruptness, you understand? Of gravity, of sincerity. The, basically the fruit of the spirit. Okay, read that part again, verse 5. Was the Solomon chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit mm -hmm. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. You see that thing? The Holy Spirit will remove from thoughts that are what? Without understanding. Thoughts that have no discipline. Thoughts that have no sense. The Holy Spirit will flee. You understand? And will not what? And will remove from those that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. You see that thing? They were not going to abide. You're not going to be able to retain the laws of God in your mind because why? Because you don't have the discipline to what? To develop a, to show your pet, a pattern of good works. Because in order for something to stay in your mind, you must constantly be doing it. Practice makes perfect. Repetition is the key. You must keep repeating it over and over. You understand? Repeat. That's what I was telling brothers. Visit our YouTube page. There's a lot of videos on there. Why don't you watch the videos? Keep yourself in the spirit. But how many of you actually do that? None of you. None of you do that. You wonder why the sin keeps coming back. Because you're not what? You're not in the spirit. Go to the YouTube page. We have a YouTube page. Support your own. How is other people going to support this if you don't support it? The hell is this? That's not going to happen. But by so doing, download the videos. Download those videos. YouTube has an option where you can what? You can convert the videos into MP3s. How many of you have done that? None of you have done that. But you say you are in the truth. You are not in the truth. Just think about it. Are you really in the truth? No. Read that again. Verse 5. Was the Solomon chapter one verse five? For the Read. Holy Spirit discipline will flee deceit. Read. Remove from those that are without understanding, mm -hmm. and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Go back to Titus chapter two verse seven again. No, Titus three verse eight. I'm sorry, Titus three verse eight. The book of Titus chapter three verse eight. Read this faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Read. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. You see that thing it says, we, it says that they which have believed in God. How do you believe in the Lord? Give me that in John 7, 38. That they which believed in God. So you must believe in the most High God. When you believe in the Lord, you are going to be careful to maintain good works. Meaning what? You will have the discipline to maintain good works. Give me that in John 7, 38. The book of John, chapter 7, verses 38. Read. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out mm -hmm. of his bed shall flow rivers of living water. You see what he's saying? He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Meaning what? Rivers of understanding. 
because you believe on Christ. Remember, Christ was the word made flesh. If you be, believe in the Lord, what, what did Christ teach? As the scripture has said, the scripture teaches that too, we must keep the commandment. Remember, Christ comes in the volume of the book. This whole book is written of Christ. And this whole Bible is about what? The commandments. The scriptures say, keep the commandments and live. That's what the scriptures say. So if you believe on Christ, as the scripture has said, that's as the scripture has said to keep and observe the law, guess what? Out of, your, out of your mind will flow rivers of living water. That's what Christ was teaching us right here. So go back to Titus 3, verse 8 now. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 8. Read. This is a faithful saying. Mm -hmm. These I, or that thou art firm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. So those that are keeping the commandments, those that are applying what is written, they will what? They will be careful. For you to be careful, you mean, that means you need to sit down and do a what? And do an analysis of what's going on, what is in front of you. That's why it says careful to maintain good works. So not only must you develop good works, but you must maintain having developed those good works. On a daily basis, you must be working on that stuff. That's why a lot of you, when I do counsels with you, I tell you that. Make sure that put a timetable together. Follow it. Discipline yourself to apply that timetable on a daily basis. Keep it simple at the beginning and build that timetable up until it gets to that level of complexity that you can handle. But you're not going to be able to do it if you don't start. You must start small and build your way up to that timetable to, uh, to see how you progress with small things. Then you keep adding. You continue again. You keep adding until you get to a level where you have things on lock. That takes time. It requires discipline. It requires patience and endurance. Watch this. Um, keep reading. It says, these things are what? These things are good and profitable unto men. You see that thing? Is this, These things are good and profitable unto men. Now, what you want to notice is, that, is this. If your prayer life is poor, you better fix it. If you have a poor prayer life, you must fix that thing. Because that's a pattern of good works. You know, that's a pattern of good works. So many of you, give me that in Psalms. Give me Psalms 55 and 17. Here's a, here's a pattern of, here's an example of a pattern of good works that you must develop. Remember what Christ said. Hold that. Give me Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. Let's read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 41. Read. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. It is willing, but the flesh is weak. So it says, watch and pray. Here's another thing. You see, prayer, very, very important. Prayer is important. It says, watch and pray. Pray. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. Okay. Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. The book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. Evening and morning. And at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So you see what he's saying? It says, start at verse 16, actually. Let's read verse 16. Start from there. The book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 16. Read. As for me. I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. You say, so King David is saying, as for me, I will call upon God. How do you do that? Verse 17. Watch this. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. You see, evening, morning and at noon. Three times a day. Evening, morning and at noon. How many of you do that? Very few of you do that. You wake up in the morning, you pray. You prepare before you pray. During the day at lunchtime, guess what you must do? When you take in that lunch, you can be on your phone going over scriptures, go to the bathroom whenever there's nobody there and send a small prayer to the Most High God. Keep it moving. Okay, when you arrive from work, guess what? Before class starts, sit down, prepare. Go over some scriptures, 
And guess what? Go and pray. Come to class. Develop that pattern of good works. Have a prayer. Have a, have a consistent prayer life. Have a consistent prayer life. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Luke 18 verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 18 verses 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray. Mm -hmm. And not to faint. And not to faint. He says that men ought always to pray. Always. You see the key word is always. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Meaning what? Don't drop the ball. Don't be complacent. Have develop, develop a pattern of good works and maintain those pattern of good works. One of them is prayer. Watch as well as pray. Pray, for the, pray, pray to the Lord to bring forth vengeance on this place. Pray to the Most High God to get to help you to get rid of the evils that you are dealing with. Pray to the Most High God to help you to, to give you the spirit of endurance. You must sit down and pray and examine yourself and understand the things that you are dealing with so the Lord can help you to overcome. That's the point. That's why Christ command here to say it right here because Israel, guess what Israel don't do? We don't pray. The Lord is out there and say, listen, my children are not praying. They are not crying unto me with their whole heart. Because guess what? They are comfortable in their oppression. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to the same, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You see that thing? Men ought always to pray and not faint. Watch this. Give me the book. Stay in the chapter. Okay? Luke 22, verse 30. Watch this. The book of Luke. Chapter 22, verses 30. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's a beautiful thing right there. Next verse. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. You see what Christ is telling Peter, the apostle Peter? It says, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So he's telling, he's telling Peter, prepare yourself, there's a trial coming. A trial is coming upon you, Peter, prepare yourself. That's what he's saying. Watch this, come on. But I have prayed for thee. But I have what? Prayed for thee. You see, the, the greatest man that ever set foot on this planet Earth, listen to what he's telling the apostle Peter. He says, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. The most powerful man on earth. Let's listen to what he's telling the apostle Peter. He says, Satan is coming for you. But I have prayed for you. Watch this. Come on. That thy faith fail not. That your faith fail not. You see what he's saying? That, you, that, that Satan doesn't overcome you. That's what he's telling the apostle Peter right there. So why didn't Christ say, here's a power, here's some power. Mm -mm. He said, but I have prayed for you. So which means what? There's power in prayer. You must pray. That's how we speak to the Lord. We pray. We keep the commandments. We pray so the Lord can hear our prayers in that order. But the, the apostle Peter, I mean, Christ is telling the apostle Peter, listen, Satan is coming for you, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He wasn't telling the apostle Peter, listen, I'm going to block Satan from coming for you. No, he didn't say that. He did not say, I'm going to block Satan from coming for you. No. He said, I pray, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Meaning in your patience, possess your soul, Peter. Go ahead. That thy faith fail not. Really? When thou, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. You see that thing? Meaning what? When you overcome that trial, guess what? The lessons that you've learned from that trial, you're going to what? You're going to benefit your brethren. That's what he's saying right there. When thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Because guess what? When you overcome that trial, guess what? You move to the next level of your understanding. Guess what? As somebody else that's going to come, guess what? You will be able to strengthen them in whatsoever they, whatever they are going with. Whatever they are going through, you will be able to strengthen them because you've been through it. Okay? Watch this. Give me... 
No, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. Uh, give me the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Come on. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. How many times? Three times a day. Three times a day, like we read in the book of Psalms 55, 16, and 17. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Come on. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. Uh -huh. And gave thanks before his God as he did a full time. Meaning what? As he did a full time, he developed a pattern of good works. Three times a day, Daniel will what? Will face towards Jerusalem, kneel upon his knees, face towards Jerusalem, and pray three times a day to the Most High God. It says, as he did a full time. Meaning what? He had a pattern of doing this. He did, he, so he developed a discipline to do this thing. So that's why you must have a good and a consistent prayer life. Morning, evening, and night. Watch this. Give me that in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Here's what the Apostle Paul said. He took it to another level. Okay. Now, even now that we're under lockdown and all of that, okay, there's even more opportunities for one to pray now. Because our forefathers, they did three times a day they was in captivity. Now, we, yes, we are in captivity, but there's certain freedoms that have been extended to us. Watch this. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Verse 17. Watch this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Do what? Pray without ceasing. Meaning, whatever, whenever you get a chance, praise the Lord. Okay, praise the most high like God. Get into the habit of doing that. Because a lot of you, you, you know, you know, you know, if you want to see if really like a, um, brothers and sisters take things for granted. You, you leave your house, right? You leave your house. You think everything is guaranteed. You're going to be fine. You leave your house. You don't pray to the Lord. You understand? There's a corona on the loose. You don't pray to the Lord to protect you when you leave the house. Whether it be going to the shops, wherever. You don't pray to the Most High. You don't give thanks and honor and praise to the Lord this day. You're not doing that. Because you are complacent. You are not in the spirit. You come back, praise the Most High that you made it home. You understand? That's what the Lord is looking. The Lord is looking for that fear. He wants to see that fear in you. And that you understand that the only reason why we are breathing is because he's the one that is allowing us to do that, to be alive this day. So we take those things for granted. That's why if you notice, like, um, you see, oh, we see when you are still, a, you, are, you, are, you are young, you are a spring chicken, you going up the stairs, you be running up the stairs. As time goes, right? You, you, then you look at an elderly person. What they do is they'll just be taking one step at a time, you see, because now the joints are weak and all that. They take it one step at a time. They be praising the Lord every step they take. But you see, you're not supposed to be doing that when things go wrong. Because that's what we do as Israel. We praise the Lord when we see we're in trouble. Only then you remember prayer. Only then you remember where um, the Lord's prayer is. Only then you remember where Jerusalem, where, where, where Jerusalem's direction is. Only on that day. No. Praise the, more, the most high God when things are going well or things are going good. Whatever, whenever, whatever the problem, whatever issues you are going through, whether you're in pain, you are crying, whatever. Praise the most high God for that day. We, that's a pattern of good works we must develop each and every one of us. That's how you're going to be able to get to make sure that you, you enjoy that thorn in the flesh. You keep fighting. That's how you're going to stay in the fight. You must, in order to win, you must stay in the fight. That's why it says, pray without ceasing. Use every opportunity to praise the Holy One of Israel. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Because there are certain sins, they can only come out through fasting. You must pray, but you must also fast. To the certain things, they're not going to go away until you fast. Okay, watch this. Matthew 17, verse 21. 
The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. Read. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You see that thing? It says, how be it. However, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer. That's why it says, watch as well as pray and fasting. You must get into the habit of fasting. You understand? We must get into the habit of fasting. Another thing that I've noticed is that because we have monthly fasts, okay? For brothers wants to be reminded all the time. Why do you need to be reminded of that? The first week of every month we fast, but brothers wants to be reminded. Brothers, by the way, is the first month of the, the first, the first month of every month we fast. Why must you be reminded? Because you have to stay in the spirit. As a body, we fast. The first, the first week of every month, we fast. You understand? So here's what we're going to do. Okay. Mm, let me see. This is the week of the 10th. Okay. The 9th. So on Thursday, on Thursday of the week of the 30th, right, which will go into June, on Thursday, as a congregation, we're going to fast. We're going to fast until from Thursday sundown to Friday sundown. So mark it down. Okay. Thursday sundown to Friday sundown. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do it like that. Wednesday sundown to Thursday sundown. The reason why I'm doing that is because there are sisters that will have to prepare for the Sabbath and all that. So they would have to cook and things of that nature. So Wednesday sundown to Thursday sundown, we will be fasting. So everybody just, you know, get yourself together. Okay, keep that in your diary. Write it down, have it as a reminder so that you know on that day we're going to fast. So every first week, the first week of uh, every new month, that first week on a Wednesday, we fast. Okay? So let me put it like that. So we're going to do, we, we, this is the rotation we're going to have as a board. We're going to have this rotation. So every month, the first week, of every new month on a Wednesday, we fast as a congregation. Okay? Read that again, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. How be it? Read. That kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. He says, this, there's, certain, there's certain things you are not going to be able to overcome them if you don't fast as well as pray. So the most High God wants, that, wants us to do that. So we must develop those patterns. You understand? And maintain doing those good works. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 35 verse 20. Serac, Ecclesiastes chapter 35 and verse 20. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 20. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction mm -hmm. and clouds of rain in the time of drought. You saw it says mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. Because guess what? You want mercy in the time of affliction. When you are afflicted, you want the most high God to show you mercy. When you are in affliction. Because guess what? The Lord is, is going to, the most high God will show you mercy if you what? If you are always fighting to make sure if you are loyal to him. When you are loyal to the most high God, you always do the work. You always fight to keep the unity of the brethren. You keep the commandments. You keep yourself away from your own sins and all that. Guess what? The day when you fall short, the most high God, guess what he will do? He will have mercy upon you when that affliction comes upon you. The Lord will be lenient on you. But he will be sure to make sure that you, you learn out of that situation, out of their affliction. To what? They are, these trials are designed to purge evils and plagues out of our spirits. So that's why they are necessary. Okay, read verse 20 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 20. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. Mm -hmm. the clouds of rain in the time of drought. You see that thing? So now when it says mercy is seasonable, that's exactly what the apostle Paul was talking about when he was saying, go back to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, mercy is seasonable because the trials are seasonable. 
So whenever is your season for your trials and all that, then you want the most I go to show you mercy on that day when you are going through that trial. Okay? To help you, to give you strength to overcome. Watch this. Read that. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Second book of Corinthians 12 verse 9. Read. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For mm -hmm. my strength is made perfect in weakness. Read. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see that thing, that the power of Christ may rest upon me because what? You are weak in the flesh because you understand the flesh is weak. So the Lord will leave a thorn in that flesh that is weak so that you can rely on him to overcome. That's the point. So that you know, because you know, you know that that sin that you're going over, yeah, that you are going through, that trial, that pesky thing, that pesky sin that doesn't want to go away, is difficult, is a big mountain. Guess what? The most High God will leave it in your spirit so that you rely 100% on him so that on the day when you overcome it, when the Lord returns or you die in this truth, you're going to know the Lord is the one that take me, took me out of that thing. You will know. You will glorify the Father. You're not going to glorify yourself. Because if he can just allow you to just a smooth ride, you're going to think, you know what? I'm pretty powerful. No. The point of the Lord doing that is so you can rely on him 100%. Don't be double-minded. You must know he's the one that brought you out of this thing. You must know that thing. That's why he's doing it. That's why the apostle, read that again, verse 9. The apostle Paul asked many times, the Lord said, no. Read it. Second Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Mm -hmm. My strength is made perfect in weakness. In what? My strength is made perfect in weakness. You see what it's saying? My strength is made, there's meaning the strength of Christ is made perfect in weakness, in our weaknesses. Because whatever trial, how big of a mountain Kilimanjaro it is, the Lord is the one that is going to help you to overcome, to move that mountain. He's the one that's going to do it. Because when you, you realize that everybody, when you, like I mentioned earlier on, when you've been in this truth for more than six months, you start to realize that six months is still too short. But, you know, a year, two years and all that, um, you start to, you, you're going to discover this sin right here, this is a thorn in my flesh. Yeah, all the other ones, I seem to have them on lock, all praise to the Mosa. But this particular one right here, I'm really struggling with this thing. Yes, it goes for a season and then keeps coming back. Yeah, that's the one right there. The Lord is what? He wants to wants you to praise him. 100. With all your soul and with all your mind. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 39 now. Verse 33. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 33. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 33. All the works of the Lord are good. And he will give every needful thing in due season. You see that thing? It says, all the works of the Lord are good. But here's the point. He says, he will give every needful thing in due season. What are you going to need in that season? Go back to Sirach 35, verse 20. The needful thing that you're going to need in that particular season is what? This right here we're about to read. Read that again, verse 20. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 20. Mercy is, season, is seasonable in the time of affliction. You see that thing? This is what you're going to need in that season. That needful thing is the mercy that you're going to need. Because in the time of affliction, in the time of your trial, you're going to need the mercy. You're going to need the most high God to deal with you according to his mercy. You're going to beg for that thing. Why? Because you need the Lord, yes, to help to, to teach you, the, to help you to learn from that trial. You understand? So you can grow. Two, you must be able to not to overcome it. You pray the Lord, the Lord gives you mercy to overcome the trial and to take lessons from that trial. So you can what? Strengthen your brethren. Like, uh, like Christ said to, our, to the Apostle Peter in Luke 22. Okay? That's the point of doing this. Go back to Sirach 33 now. Okay? No, Sirach 39 verse 33 again. 
the book of Ecclesiastes 39 verse 33. All the works of the Lord are good. And he will give every needful thing in due season. That needful thing is mercy. In due season, meaning in the time of affliction, the Lord will give you mercy. Watch this. Um, because we must wait on the Most High. During that trial, that's why he says, in your patience, possess your soul. So it will, it will take patience for you to do what? To overcome that trial and to learn from that trial and to overcome it. Watch this. Give me the book of First Peter 1. These trials are designed to purge the evils, the plagues, the hang-ups out of our spirits. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, for a what? Be, for a season. It says we greatly rejoice now for a season, because that season is the trial that you'll be in. That's, your, that's the season for your trial. You understand? Come with that, the, those, that seasonal trial, because the temptation comes, is the, is, temptations are seasonal. So in that season of your trial, you must rejoice because why? The Lord is with you. But your job is to focus on the trial and the laws of the Most High God so you can learn from the trial and overcome that trial and strengthen your brethren. Read that again, verse 6. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness, through manifold temptations. Because now the heaviness that you're going to be in is because of what? You're the trial that's going to come upon you. That trial that will come upon you, yes, because the trials, when, when the correction comes, is not, is not, is not uh, some correction, a lot of correction. It's not nice to receive the correction. But guess what? The Mosaic like God is doing this to do what? To purge, to purge evils out of your spirit. To purge out the leaven out of your spirit. That's why those, those, the correction comes. The rebuke comes. You understand? The Lord will do that to, to refine you. Like gold is refined. Gold, Pella, when you look at when gold is refined, they don't put it in, in, in heat they only just once. No. It goes in. They melt it. They take out the, the, the metals, the foreign materials. And guess what? They wash it. They take it back. To melt it again to see it, the, it goes through multiple iterations so likewise we also this bible is the fire and we that gold we already the gold the key is take out the impurities out of the gold that requires multiple iterations until you are that pure gold that's what the lord is looking for and that's what the lord is going to do with us watch this read that again verse six. First book of Peter, chapter 1 verse 6 Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. You are in heaviness, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Next verse. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Yeah, keep reading, keep reading. That the trial of your faith. That the what? Trial of your faith. Remember what, they are, what Christ told the apostle Peter? Go back to Luke 22, verse 31. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 31. Come on. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So now the Lord is telling the apostle Peter that the trial is coming. Go ahead. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. You see that thing? And but I have prayed for thee, that your faith fail not. So now, because guess what? The Apostle Peter, his faith is going to be tried. The trying of your faith. Because Christ was telling Peter that your faith is going to be tried. That's what, the, that's what these, all these trials are about. To try your faith. Are you going to hold on? Are you going to fight? Or are you just going to give up and go back into the world? It says, I, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Because Peter's trial is going to be what? Tried. Go back to where he was at now. First Peter's. 
First book of Peter, chapter one, verse seven. Mm-hmm. That the trial of your faith mm-hmm. is so much more precious than being much of- more, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Read that again, verse right, verse seven. First book of Peter, chapter one, verse seven. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, mm-hmm. though it be tried with fire. Though it be might, tried with what? Though it be tried with fire. So your faith is going to be tried with fire, just like gold is tried, is put in the fire to be melted, to take out the impurities. Your faith also is going to be tried in fire. What is the fire? Give me Jeremiah 5, verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5. Verses 14. Mm-hmm. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Mm-hmm. And the people would, and it shall devour thee. So he says, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. So the word of God is spiritual fire. You understand? So when it says he's going to try your faith by the fire, it's talking about the word of God. The Lord, your faith is going to be tried whether you believe in this or not. The most High God will allow trials to come upon you to see if you're going to withstand the heat so that you can be proved and be approved. That's what the Lord is doing with each and every one of us in this truth. Either until you die in this truth or until the Lord returns. But the trials will keep coming. After one child, the next one will come in is the next season. So you must prepare always for the next fight all the time. Give me Jeremiah chapter 29. I mean, Jeremiah 23. Um, Jeremiah 23 verse 29. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. Is not my word like a fire? Is not what? Is not my word like a fire? Like you see, as a fire. Is telling, the Lord is telling you, he says, his word is like as a fire. His word is fire, spiritual fire. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire? Read. Saith the Lord. Saith the what? And saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. The Lord is telling you, he says, his word, his law, statutes, and commandments, it's fire. Come on. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. You see that thing? It's like a hammer. So this Bible is a hammer on your head, on your spirit. Why? To get your mind right. You understand? You, this, the, a hammer is, a, is something that is supposed to, uh, to get your attention. You understand? To get your attention so you can, you can focus. That's what the word of God is. The fire is going to burn you. Burns your spirit. So that you can get your mind right. So that's why he's saying. He says go back to 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1 verse 7. So these trials. They are designed to do what? They are designed to get rid of the what? The leaven out of our spirit. Out of our minds. And the way the Lord does it. He uses his word. like a, Because it's fire. He's going to get rid of the things that are not needful. For your what? For your deliverance. First Peter 1 verse 7. First book of Peter chapter 1 verse 7. That the trial of your faith. Being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Than what? Than of gold that perisheth. You see that it says the trial of your faith is much more precious than of gold that perisheth. We saw, but, but what is he doing? He is giving us a similitude. The same way. Uh, gold must be put in the furnace. You also, your, your faith must be put in the furnace. To what? To try you. To prove you if you are worthy. Go ahead. Though it be tried with fire. Mm-hmm. Come on. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? Because when the Lord returns, then guess what? You're going to receive that crown of righteousness. You will receive your crown. You just have to do and apply what is written. So don't have the spirit of Lord's will. I make it into the kingdom. Oh, no, no. 
is written already. The kingdom is yours. Remember when we was with Joshua, when we was with Moses, what did they keep telling us? No, the land is already delivered into your hands. Your job is to go there and get it. Likewise, today is the same thing. The kingdom is ours already. Our job is to do what? Is to labor in the kingdom to get it. That's it. That's it. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. So we need to prepare for the second coming of the Messiah. And that's what we're doing right now. We're preparing for the second coming of Christ. So those things that keep coming back, you don't see it coming. It, it, it looks like it just comes out of nowhere. You don't see it coming. It's because you are not watching and praying. You don't have not developed a pattern of good works and maintain applying those pattern of good works to your life. Give me Romans 15 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that thing? The things that were written aforetime, they were written for us to learn from, as an example. So the Mosaic God, the trust that he put through our forefathers and foremothers, was for us to learn, to follow the right footsteps that came before us, and learn from their mistakes and not repeat them. That's the key. A four time were written for us to learn from so we can get comfort of what the trust that the Lord put up on our forefathers and foremothers and learn from them and follow after their righteous works. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23. This is our forefather Moses. Okay, in Egypt. Remember Moses was, he had a very high position in Egypt. Watch this. Hebrews 11 verse 23. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23. By faith, Moses, when by he what? was born. By faith, Moses. By faith, by faith, by faith. Because Moses' faith was what? Was tried. The same way the Apostle Peter is saying in 1 Peter 1 verse 7. The trying of your faith. Your faith is going to be tried by fire, by trials. Okay? Read that part again. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a prophet. He was a prophet child. He was a proper child. Come on. Because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Come on. Because remember what the king's commandment was. Who's the day? Shifra and Pua. If you read Exodus 1. Shifra and Pua is the one 15 down. Is the, those are the for our foremothers. That was what? That said, no, we're not going to kill our Hebrew children because the uh, Pharaoh's commandment was, if it be a boy, kill them. If it be a girl, keep them alive. So the day is Shifra and poor. Go ahead. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be called an Egyptian. He refused that. Although with the stature he had in Egypt, the, the, the position he has in he, had in, he was a prince. But he says he refused to be called the what? The son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused that. Because why? He understood something he understood in the spirit. Watch this. Read on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He did what? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He says choosing rather to suffer affliction. He chose affliction. Because guess what? In your affliction, guess what the Lord will show you? Mercy. And that's what the Lord did for Moses. That's what the Lord is doing for us this day. In our affliction, what is the mercy that the Lord is shown unto us? He's allowing us to be woken up, to be think and remember who we are in the lens of our captivity. That's the mercy. In affliction, the Lord, that's what he's doing. Watch this. I think there's a scripture in Job. Could you give me that in Job? I believe it's 36. Let me look at it. Yep, give me Job chapter 36 and verse, Job 36 verse 15. Watch this. The book of Job chapter 36 verses 15. Read. Right? He delivered the poor in his affliction. In his what? In his affliction. He delivered us in our affliction. Are we not afflicted right now? Yes, we're in captivity. We're in slavery. We are oppressed. At the bottom, okay? It says he delivered the poor in his affliction. Go ahead. 
He delivered the poor in his affliction and opened their ears in oppression. And opened their ears in oppression. The Lord is opening our ears this day. That's why prophets are hitting the streets to open the minds of our people, to open their ears, to open their eyes so they can see what's going on and remember who they are. That's the message that the Lord is showing to us in our affliction. That's why it says he delivered the poor in his affliction. That deliverance right there is a spiritual deliverance first and foremost. Then there's going to be a physical deliverance. But right now it's a spiritual one. For the most High God to allow our minds to be purged of the sins that we've got so we can come back to him and be holy. Okay? Go back. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. Come on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh -huh. than, than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because guess what? The pleasures that you enjoy, the pleasures of sin, those things are seasonal. They are not going to last. They are not going to last. So Moses chose to suffer now and get the reward later. So that takes discipline and patience for that to happen. So he decided, you know, I'll rather suffer now and, and be happy later. So delayed gratification, that's the same thing we must be doing. Suffer now, reward later. Discipline now, reward later. Consistency now, reward later. A ha good habit now, reward later, which is what? The kingdom. So you rather suffer now, uh, um, receive the afflictions that the Lord will send upon you, Receive the trials so you can be purged of your issues and, and those hang-ups so that you can be approved on that day when you stand before Christ. That is what we are all doing. That's what every soul that is in here is here for. This is not the kingdom of heaven. This is the way to get there. It's a method to get to the kingdom of heaven. Read that again, verse 25. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh -huh. and to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because the pleasure that comes with sin, they are seasonal. Meaning what? They don't last. It's only for that moment. You understand? You will make a permanent decision on a temporary feeling. Could you imagine that? You make a permanent decision on a temporary feeling. Because when you don't have the sense, you're going to do that. You're going to make a permanent decision on something that you are feeling that is temporary. And that will, get, that will cost you the kingdom. So Moses, he calculated the real, I'll rather suffer this affliction. I'll rather go this, through these trials because guess what? When the Lord returns, I'm going to rest forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rest forever. All the, all the sorrows that we're in, all the afflictions that we're in, you understand? All the depression that we're in, the oppression that we're suffering. The Lord says on that day, I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to restore everything that you've lost from the time before the world was created. I'm going to restore everything back to you and then some. So you rather suffer now and get the, get the reward that will endure forever rather than to enjoy sin that is seasonal and temporary and cost you the kingdom forever. The choice is yours. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 33. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. It says, if you don't forsake all that you have, you cannot be my disciple. Meaning what? Don't be one foot in and one foot out. You want to be in the world and be in the truth at the same time. That's not going to happen. You understand? Christ wants you to be disciplined. Christ wants you to make up your mind. Are you in this? If you are, be, the, be here 100. If you are in the world, be in the world 100. At least I know you are a full-blown demon. And guess what? You are a full-blown righteous man. Don't be in the middle. You understand? It says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Meaning what? You must deny yourself. You must deny your life. 
you must deny yourself the pleasures that only last for a season. Suppress those things. Use the word of God to discipline you. Okay? And understand and keep, keep, keep your eyes on the prize. Not the coochie. The coochie is not the prize. The kingdom is. Understand that. Shout out to those brothers that are buried in the women's coochies. Watch this. Sirach 21 verse 1. Watch this. This is how you make sure that the, you don't, you, this is how you make sure to forsake the things. You must forsake the things that are going to cost you the kingdom. Watch this. Sirach 21 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 21 verse 1. Come on. The book. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 1. My son, hast thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. You see that? Ask mercy for your former sins. Ask pardon. Ask the Lord to pardon your sin, your former sins. So it says, as you sin, which is all of us have, do so no more, meaning repent, and but ask. And when you ask pardon for your former sins, that means you must confess those sins. You can't ask pardon for your former sins, but you don't confess them. The Lord wants you to, to tell him the, 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 the sins that you have committed, the laws that you have broken. Father, I'm sorry I stole such and such. Father, I'm sorry that I committed an abortion. I'm, you must tell the Lord. You must confess those things. Not to any of us, but to the Most High God. You must confess those things. Those, those former sins. You must do that thing. And only then the Lord will pardon you. Your sin, the Lord will have mercy on you. He will deal with you not according to the strictness of his laws, but he's going to deal with you according to his mercy. Watch this. Give me James chapter 1 verse 12. Understand, the trials are seasonal. So always keep that in mind and that the flesh is weak. Because the trials are seasonal and the flesh is weak, your job is to strengthen your mind so you can what? You can have power over the sinful flesh. James 1 verse 12. Watch this. The book of James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. That what? Endureth temptation. That endure the temptation. You must endure the temptation, the trial. For you to endure, you must have the patience to endure. Patience is what's going to help you to endure. That's why Christ says, in your patience, possess your soul. Read that again. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Come on. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown. When he is tried. When he's tried. When he's tried, when he is tried. Because it's about what? This whole thing is about trials. What is being tried? Your faith is being tried. Watch this. Hold that. Give me First Peter 4. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. First book, of, first book of Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Which is to what? Try you. Which is to try you. What is, what are you, what is, what are you, what is being tried? Your faith is being tried. Okay, come on. As though some strange thing happened to you. you. You see that part right there? As though some strange thing is happening unto you. It's like some weird things going on around me. What the hell is going on? It's because the Lord is trying you. The Lord is getting ready to move you to the next stage in your what? In your growth in this truth. So you can't run away from those trials. You must stand the heat. So the Lord can purge certain things out of you. Read that again. First book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Read. But rejoice. But what? Rejoice. But rejoice. He says, but you must rejoice when these trials are coming. Why? Because you know the Lord wants to purge something out of you that he does not want. Go ahead. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Mm -hmm. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see that thing? When Christ returns, you also may be what? You may be glad with exceeding joy. Because you are, you part, you, you, you are, you are partaking 
in Christ's sufferings. Because when we are suffering, is what? Is also, is, is also symbolic of the suffering that Christ went through. So the seven is not above his master. So what the, the trials that Christ went through, we're going to go through them as well. So when we go through those trials, guess what that means? That means we must what? We must, we must rejoice. We must rejoice. Okay? But don't be suffering as an evildoer. Watch this. Could you keep, keep reading? Because this is where brothers and sisters fall off. Read verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Stop right there. If ye be what? If ye be reproached for the name of Christ. If you be reproached, you. hold on. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, meaning what? You are going through trials because of what? Because you apply the laws of God. He says, happy are you. Yeah, that's fine. That's all praise to the most high. Next part of the verse. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. You see that thing? Because you are in the spirit, you are applying God's commandments. Read. On their part, he is he is evil spoken of. Meaning Christ is, is, is evil spoken of because we follow after his footsteps. Come on. But on your part, he is glorified. But on your part is glorified. Meaning Christ is glorified when you overcome your trials. You suffer because of what? The name of Christ. Next part of the next verse. Now watch this. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. You see that thing? But he says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. You have hatred for your brother. You understand? You are causing issues in the congregation. But he says, don't suffer like that. Don't suffer as a murderer. Next part of the verse. Come on. Or as a thief. Or as a thief. You have that thieving spirit. The Lord says, when you suffer, it's because what? It's well deserved. Why? Because you don't want to repent. Okay, come on. Or as an evil doer. Or as an evil doer. Don't suffer as an evil doer because you are doing some evil stuff. Go ahead. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. You see that thing? Or as a busybody, sowing discourse, causing issues among brethren. He says, don't suffer like that, though. You understand? So when you go through trials, understand why you are going through those trials. Are you going through them because you are an evildoer? You are a busybody? You are a murderer? You have a thieving spirit? You understand? So you examine yourself. So once you discover that this is the reason why I'm going through this, what is the next thing to, for you to do? Ask for mercy. Repent. Repent. And keep it moving. Go ahead. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Come on. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian. Suffer as a Christian, meaning as the anointed. Go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed because you are suffering because of what? You are partaking in Christ's sufferings. Read. But let him glorify God on this behalf. You see, my gloomy, give praise to the Most High. That's what he's saying. Give praises to the Most High God for this thing. Watch this. Um, why would the Lord take you through this thing? Why is the Lord taking, allowing these trials to happen upon us? Why is he doing that? The trials just keep coming over and over. The same sin keep returning over and over. Why? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Read. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Read. To humble thee. To what? And to humble thee. To humble you. The reason why the Lord did that, the 40 years in the wilderness, the Lord was doing it to humble us, to purge out of our spirits the what? The evils, the idolatrous practices, the, you understand, the evil speaking, the hatred of leadership, all of that stuff. The Lord did that thing. The spirit of murmuring and complaining. The Lord was, was what? He was doing that to humble us. Come on. To humble thee. Mm -hmm. And to prove thee. And to what? And to prove thee. And to prove you whether you are worthy for this. You are worthy to be called into this truth. Go ahead. And to know. 
what was in thine heart what was in your mind to see where your mind is at are you are, are you for this are you about this or you're just faking the funk go ahead whether thou whether thou would keep his commandments or no you see that thing the whole proving process was about what whether you're going to keep his commandments or not are you going to be loyal to his to his son are you going to be loyal to the most high god that delivered us out of the hand of egypt with a mighty hand are we going to give praise to the lord are we going to hold on because the lord sees everything that goes on he sees everything he's the almighty that's why he's called the almighty with without without beginning of days without end of days so now understanding that when we go through trials we cannot depart we cannot run away why because the lord is right there just watching why is he doing it he's paging something out of us so that's it what what you brothers and sisters need to understand is that a lot of you you are very very spoiled and i'm going to explain what i mean by that you see our people out there they don't know why they are going through these things that they are going through on a daily basis they don't know why they are plagued because they have questions but they don't know why why they are plagued and they don't know what they're supposed to do to stop the plagues but you do you know you know why you keep going through this stuff in fact more so now you you have you are more blessed because you you have somebody that can sit down with you and explain stuff to you to tell you the reason why this thing is happening to you is because you are doing this you are doing that you see coming up in this truth there's a lot of stuff that just kept happening to me over and over i had no idea what the hell that was going until the lord decided to just have mercy when you read you start to see certain things i've read this many times but i never saw it like that because on that day that's when the lord said okay i'm going to open it for you on that day you don't have to go through that now you have you have you have everything you need but yet you are still taking it for granted you are not making your calling an election show so the question you must ask are you worthy or worthless that's the question you must ask are you worthy are you you must are you going to prove yourself worthy for this truth or worthless for this truth the choice is yours choose you this day that is what the lord is trying to do for us because if we don't humble down to what this bible says the lord will humble us and you don't want to be on that side of that you don't want to be that you don't want to be on the short end of the stick you don't want that the most high god will humiliate you okay the lord will humiliate you you brothers have not gone through humiliation yet you have not gone through stuff like you have not listen the lord will humiliate you and it's not something that's going to last for a month or for oh, mm -mm. the lord will take it listen for months and months on end years even he just keeps coming every now and again keeps returning the lord will humiliate you until you get it correct and say you know what i have to humble down here then and guess what at that point the lord said i'm not going to open it to you why i'm doing this i'm going to punish you first then once i'm satisfied I will open to you why I'm, I had to do this. Then you see to say, yeah, okay, I see it now. That's how the Lord does it. You don't humble down; the Lord will humble you. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Second Book of Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. Read. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Shall what? Humble themselves. That's what the Lord is looking for. The Most High God wants us to humble ourselves to this Bible. Go ahead. And pray. And what? And pray. You see the importance of prayer. It's even mentioned in there. Humble yourself. Pray. Go ahead. And seek my face. The face of the Most High God is this Bible. Seek my face. Come on. And turn from the wicked ways. Turn from your wicked ways. Go ahead. Then will then I hear from what? him? Wait, wait, wait! What did he say? Then, 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 only then. So that means you must humble yourself. You must what? Humble yourself. Pray. Confess your sins. Seek the Lord's face. Understand why this thing is. Why you are going through this stuff, and apply what you need to do not to find yourself in those situations again. That's what the Lord. It says, and what? And turn from your wicked ways, meaning repent. Forsake thy sins. 
Only then the Lord will do what? Then will I hear from heaven uh-huh. and will forgive their sin. And he will do what? And will forgive their sin. The Lord says, only then he says, I'm going to hear you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you time to listen to you and will forgive your sin. I'm going to blot out your sins. Go ahead. And will heal their land. You see that thing right there? The Lord, he says he will heal our land. Meaning what? We were gonna, we're gonna go back home. That's what he's saying right there. That is what he's saying right there. So with that, I'm gonna end the class right here. Shalom, more praise to the Most High God. Let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's get the most high hand for that class. All praise to the Lord.